UK YouTubers, this is Joe from Artonian TV. Now, I'm going to do a bit of an in-depth look at Pluto here because this is breaking news. Uh, <laughs> some of you may have already seen this video, which I put up yesterday, or well, this morning, I should say. Uh, Pluto, Pluto has buildings, huge rectangular structures. It's on a, almost 500 views already, so that's, it may go viral, may not, don't know. Depends who picks it up. Um, now, I'm... <laughs> I'm going to explain to you what happened and how I found this stuff and how to, to look for it yourself. The important thing to remember with a lot of these images that, Mar that uh, NASA give us is that they do play around with the images somewhat and they probably over brighten them or may even invert them. They did, we don't know whether this is a negative that's been played around with or not. So bear that in mind. Okay, I'm just going to play the intro here. Now, the bit of the... The part of the planet I was looking at is the top half. <laughs> this whole area at the top here. There's loads of stuff. And there may be loads more stuff down here, which I haven't even looked at yet, really. Uh, it'll go full screen. Now, I'll, I'll try and talk you through the processing I did here to get to this level of detail. Now, the first area I was looking at was up here on the right. I thought I saw something interesting. And when you invert it to negative, like I've done here, you can see there's something going on there, but it's not that clear. But there do seem to be some long straight structures here. And this is probably a bit over zoomed and you won't see it. So I'll go back to this size. And you can see like a squarish structure here with a circle in the middle there. But these are not very clear. And, I'm, and I was a bit disappointed with that. This may be nothing, this could be completely natural. Uh, these aren't exactly straight structures. So then I decided to have a look over this side, and there's this hexagonal crater type structure here. And if you look above this area, and you really, now let me pause it there. What I did here is I really cranked up the, the contrast and brightness, played it by about, oh, 50%. I mean, I really went in hard, probably a couple of times actually, uh, around 50 or 60%. So I really pushed the contrast on this. This is still a normal image. I haven't turned it to negative yet, but you'll see that in a second. Now, if I go full screen, you can already see that there are some diagonal, lots of diagonal lines coming across this way. Now, I'll let that play through a little bit and, and uh, we'll see the enhancements come up. Now, this is taken from a TIFF image, as it says here. And TIFF images do not break up in the same way as JPEGs do. They will eventually break up if you really crank them really too hard. Uh, but they don't break up that easily. JPEGs are already compressed and resized and stuff and already have kind of square blocks in them. But these square, the square blocks you get in, in JPEG images are not, don't go across diagonally. They go across left to right up, you know, um, up, up and down, like any pixels would. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that in a minute. Okay. Now, Okay, I'll let that play through. Now, this basically I just turned to negative, and then suddenly I noticed all these huge rectangular structures here, and they go right across this area. Here's that crater I was initially homing in on. I was looking at this crater thinking it might be something interesting. It may well turn out to be something interesting, but it turns out that just above it are a huge cluster of buildings. It looks like a city, um, but. The thing is, this is a very, very, I mean, it's a, a small planet, but these are enormous buildings, if they, if they are buildings. And they certainly do look like buildings that are kind of in a, in a huge sort of uh, city structure. Now, when you get too close, it doesn't get any sharper. But you can see here clearly that there are some large square and rectangular structures here. And there's a whole bunch over here. And th these go right across this section of, of, the, of the planet. Now, let me go smaller here because it will actually look slightly better if you look at it smaller. You can see it a bit clearer now, I think, when you, when you zoom back a bit. Now, they, as I put here, these run diagonally to the pixels, so they're nothing to do with pixelation. So anyone says this is fake or it's pixelation and I've over-processed the image, uh, no. Uh, and I will demonstrate that in a second. And that's about, that's about as clear as the, this gets in the actual video and all I did later on was 
colour filter it and do a couple of things to it just to try and show it in a different light. Now, I've got it up in my graphics processor here. Now, here's that image. And this is already processed, of course. But you can start to see these pop out already. But you won't really see them unless you get this turn to negative and then you can really see some interesting stuff here and this is the whole top half of the planet pretty much I mean we're missing this part here because that's where the lighter part of the planet is here where the Sun's catching it so we're only seeing the the, the more densely shadowed areas here in detail so there's probably a lot more going on around to the left here and possibly around to the right as well so as we get more images of, of Pluto as as we get closer and, and do a flyby I'm, I fully expect to see more of the same uh, whether there could even be much larger structures don't know don't know yet we haven't seen the the best and closest images yet so stay tuned for that I will be doing an update as it comes in in the next few days as soon as the images come in I will show them to you as best I can and I'll just flick through some of the now this this is the top part of the planet again just to reiterate what I've already done in the video here's the heavily contrasted edit and again heavily contrasted again and then negative so that's really all you have to do uh, you just got to get the amount of contrast and brightness right you just have to play around with that quite a lot to get to really push it without destroying the information and what I'll do is I'll, I can demonstrate here you can see the pixels if I zoom right in that's as far as I can zoom in you can see the individual pixels here now of course they run in parallel to each other with the edges of the picture so they run left to right and up, up and down so these structures don't run in, in parallel with those pixels at all these are completely diagonal to it so and they're running roughly at 45 degrees here so there's nothing to do with pixelation and that can be demonstrated quite simply by zooming in you can actually see the individual pixels here and it, it, these structures are going the other way so I cannot see how that can pop no one's actually acu accused me of uh, this being pixelation yet but I'm sure someone will uh, some some spook will probably you know, some guy from MI6 will probably come on here and <laughs> who knows <laughs> or someone from NASA will probably try and debunk it but we'll see uh, we'll see what they have to say uh, I think uh, there are probably a lot more of these structures on this planetary body who knows I mean this this may be a, a, some something to do with the type of camera they're using I don't know but generally if these if the structures go against the grain of the actual pixels themselves then they're most likely there I can't see why or how other th th those those shadows and shapes could be there otherwise now obviously you can't see them in the raw image but that but this is quite normal and the the, the structures may well be uh, this is a highly reflect highly reflected this part of the image here and the, the the image may well have been brightened considerably just to show the detail uh, that NASA do this with the uh, with our moon a lot they are they often brighten the images really really high and you can't see any contrast and 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 real close ground detail but you can even in the raw image you can see there's some there's a rectangular structure here you can just about make it out there so that you can you can see it without doing anything you've just got to look closely and squint a bit and you know stare at it for a while and you will see it but obviously if you darken it and process the images like I've done this is what you will get and you can, I mean, it, it, it probably looks even clearer in black and white here. Let's just grayscale that image a minute. And some of you may see that better now if you're colorblind or, or have the settings wrong on your laptop or device. Uh, so there you go. It looks like a massive city with huge buildings. Crazy, absolutely crazy. I, I was actually quite shocked. I didn't expect to find this. I didn't look for a city. I, people do accuse me of imposing my imagination on these worlds but of course I'm not a magician I don't imagine things they just appear on these planets I mean that's just nonsense uh, I was actually looking at this hexagonal shape here when I noticed
these rectangular structures above it. So I, I kind of stumbled on these by accident, really. I didn't know they were there. I wasn't looking for them. I just did my normal set of processing techniques that I do with any planetary body like the Moon or Mars when I'm looking at um, aerial shots and uh, satellite shots. That's just the normal technique I use. And it's a, it's a simple technique. Uh, anyone can do it. If you've got Photoshop or something similar, I, I use PaintShop Pro 9. It's actually a lot quicker to use, a lot more simple, and it's free. You can download it for free if you look it up. Um, so there we go. Uh, it's as simple as that. I'll, just, I'll tell you what I will do. I'll get the raw image, which is this one here. Now, this is just the clip from the top of the, the raw image. This is completely raw. I haven't done anything to that. Uh, I've just clipped it off, okay? So that's as it comes. And to get to how I did, the brightness and contrast, let's go in quite heavy with it. Minus 20, plus 20. Now I'll probably have to do that a few times to get it to really pop like that. Uh, probably a bit too much there. And let's use the Clarify tool. Now the Clarify it also does brightness and contrast as well. Uh, but I think it ups the brightness a bit more. And now I'll flip it to negative. Just color balance, negative image. There we go. And after I neg ne negged it up like that, I probably went in and darkened it a bit more. But now you can already see these structures, but you need to go in the contrast a bit more. And there we have it. You will see them just there. And then I sharpened it. Uh, sharpen it a bit there. That may some that sometimes makes the image a lot worse. Let's use the clarify tool again. That might do it. That will bring it out. So there we go. That's as simple as that. And you can see all these multiple, multiple rectilinear and square structures, all kind of interlaced and some of them even overlapping slightly. So uh, I would expect these to be on multiple levels. They're not all on one level here. Some of these are probably built on top of each other, perhaps. That's what it looks like. So there we go. That's all you have to do is that get the image, do what I just did, and you will see the same. Uh, you just got to really go in with the contrast and then flip it to negative. Maybe play with the contrast a bit more after that and perhaps darken it a bit. Let's go in a bit darker. Uh, let's just go 12 dark, minus 12. That helps a bit. There we go. So simple as that, folks. Thanks for watching. There will be updates coming up on Pluto in the next few days. I will keep a very close eye on these images coming in from NASA. And congratulations to NASA as well for uh, a historic mission. And also con a very nice story I thought was uh, that famous astronomer Clyde Tombaugh, uh, the guy who discovered the planet Pluto in 1930, they got his ashes inside the actual probe, which they're, they're going to launch into space as they make their close approach to the to the planet, which I thought was a very nice touch. He died back in 97, a uh, genius of an astronomer, uh, discovered many planetary bodies, including Pluto, of course. And now he's up there with it, which I think is a, a very nice touch from NASA. So fair, fair shout on them for that. I think that's uh, marvelous. Okay, thanks for watching, everybody. Stay tuned, there will be more. See you soon.